Hello friends and welcome back to Gastro Guru. My name is Dr. Nisak Patel. I am a gastroenterologist from Seeds Hospital, Surat, Gujarat. These videos are for the medical students, the resident doctors and the practicing physicians. These videos will help you to diagnose gastro patients which are coming to your OPD in a better manner. Uh, These videos will give you great insights. So please watch till end. Gastro Guru ke saath badhaye apne paachan swasthe ka anubhav, jahan vigyan aur vastavik gyan milte hain. Authentic Medical Health Information, Gastro Guru Ke Sangh. Today we are going to discuss an interesting case of a 10 year old boy who came to me with abdominal pain. So looking onto the case history, uh, he is a young boy who has presented with abdominal pain and immediate post meals vomiting. The total duration of the symptoms are since last 10 days. Initial treatment was given by a general practitioner in form of antibiotics, diagnosing as a case of infective enteritis, but he was not getting better. Then he went to a pediatrician, he changed the antibiotics, continued IV fluids and other symptomatic treatment. And as I said, ultrasound was showing features of enteritis. However, all the blood workup and urine workup was normal. However, there was severe progression of the symptoms. The pain of the child was keeping on increasing and as was the anxiety of the parents. So keeping these things in mind, uh, a CT scan was done, but however, CT was completely normal. Also note that there was persistent severe abdominal pain and immediate post meals vomiting. So as we have discussed in the previous videos of vomiting, if there is abdominal pain which is colic in nature and immediate post meals vomiting, then we need to think of any metabolic problem, any central problem or functional GI disorder or some drug related problem. So moving ahead, so he came to me on the day uh, 10th of the pain. The pain was very severe. The child was tossing on the bed. The nature of the pain was colicky, location was periumbilical and it was associated with immediate post meals vomiting. So now uh, what clinical information can we get from this history? So number one, the location of the pain is in the small intestine. So we know the pathology is in the small intestine. However, CT scan is not showing anything. So normal CT, normal blood reports and he has not responded to antibiotics. So after 10 days of antibiotics, Initial GP gave him monocef and then he was switched over to a zostem that is cefoparazone sulbectum with doxycycline. However, he was not getting better. So we think of metabolic reasons. So what metabolic cause can cause severe abdominal pain and vomiting? So one of them is porphyria as I have mentioned. Other it can be some mucosal pathology because the mucosa we cannot see in a ultrasound or a CT scan. CT enterography can help us to assess any mucosal pathology, but sometimes even CT enterography can be normal. There can be transient intersusception, which is very common in children and it can cause severe abdominal pain and vomiting, or it can be some functional problem. So moving ahead further, whether endoscopy is required in this case or not. So we will discuss this endoscopy part later. I'll just give you few background points, which the uh, mother told me. So this is how we should take history in detail. So when I was generally examining him, I noticed that there were two small dots on the ankle. So I asked the mom, ke, uh, ye kya hai? So he told the she told ke ye to ne kata hua hai, sir, or ne kata, isi wajay sir, typhoid hua hai. So just sorry. So uh, just see that the mom was under impression that typhoid is because of But that point was very important because of the disease, we don't get such dots. So one thing immediately clicked into my mind and I immediately asked the nursing staff that I have to examine the buttocks behind me. And as soon as I examined the buttocks, the, I, the diagnosis was clicked. So the diagnosis was the patient was having Hinox pollen purpura. So here we can see that there were multiple purpuric patches in the buttocks, but there were only two small dots in the ankle. Rest all the examination was normal. 
सो हिनॉक्स कॉलिन परप्यूरा में मैंने फिर पास हिस्ट्री पूछी दो द मदर टेल्ड मदर टोल्ड मी दैट ही हैड अपर रेस्पिरेटरी सर्दी जुकाम हुआ था 15 डेज बेटर एंड दैट रिजॉल्व विथ ट्रीटमेंट दीज वर द अदर प्रोग्रेशन ऑफ द पैचेज दिस वॉज अराउंड सेवन डेज लेटर सो दिस परप्यूरा कैप्ट ऑन इंक्रीजिंग ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ सेवन डेज तो दैट वॉज द बैकग्राउंड सो इन आई जी ए वैस्क्यूलाइटिस और हिनॉक्स पॉलिन परप्यूरा देर आर ट्राइड ऑफ सिम्टम्स नंबर वन इज अ पाल्पेबल परप्यूरा विच इज मोस्ट कॉमन हॉलमार्क एंड इट इज सीन इन द लोअर एक्सट्रीमिटीज एंड प्रिडोमिनेटली इन द बटक्स इट इज पेनलेस एंड इट डजेंट कॉज एनी इचिंग देर इज एबडामिनल पेन विच इज कोलिकी एंड इंक्रीज इज पोस्ट मील्स बिकॉज इट इज अ वैस्क्यूलाइटिस इट इज अ म्यूकोसल पैथोलॉजी सो वी सॉ के चार कारण हो सकते हैं मेटाबॉलिक म्यूकोसल फंक्शनल और इंटरसेप्शन सो हमें ये पता चल जाना चाहिए कि वी आर थिंकिंग ऑफ सम म्यूकोसल पैथोलॉजी द थर्ड थिंग इज इट कैन कॉज आर्थराइटिस और आर्थराजिया विच वॉज एबसेंट इन दिस पेशेंट सो देर इज पेन एंड स्वेलिंग एस्पेशली ऑफ द लार्ज जॉइंट्स वॉट कैन बी अदर डिफरेंशियल्स सो वन डिफरेंशियल इट इट कैन बी एनका एसोसिएटेड वैस्कुलाइटिस हाउ एवर इट इज रेयर इन चिल्ड्रन also there is multi system involvement so there will be involvements of the kidney of the lungs with systemic symptoms it requires uh, anca testing and complement testing and possibly a renal biopsy other differential it can be sle but however it is a female predominant disease however it can be present in males as well but there was no multi system involvement there was uh, no malar rash uh, the purpura is not very common in sle and if suspected we can send anti ds dna antibodies or ana levels it can be ttp but however ttp is just low platelets with purpura without any systemic symptoms however the patient did have uh, abdominal pain and vomiting so clinically ttp was very less likely however in florid cases of ttp there can be abdominal pain there can be renal involvement uh, there can be cns involvement uh gastrointestinal causes it can be sometimes intersusception or mesenteric ischemia however they were ruled out because ct scan was normal also note that classical triad is only seen in 85% of the cases also be aware of the other symptoms in 10 to 15% of the patients there can be renal involvement and it can cause hematuria and proteinuria Uh, there can be uh, blood in the vomit or blood in the stools malina and hematochezia in severe cases uh, there can be uh, hypertension cns manifestations but they are very rare but we need to be uh, following these patients for blood pressure for proteinuria etc so investigations lab investigations urine analysis to check for hematuria proteinuria aso titer not very important but we can check to rule out recent streptococcal infection in the past coagulation profile uh, for example platelets in iga vasculitis in ocolin purpura the platelets are normal however in ttp the platelets will be low uh, mostly in sle the platelets will be low uh, in anca the platelets may be normal may be high uh, if required do ana anca complement levels if required then endoscopy endoscopy shows petechiae ulcers and edema on the mucosa so this is a mucosal disease and we can take biopsies from them as well but endoscopy is not required in all the cases if the diagnosis is classical if we are seeing uh, the rash on the skin then endoscopy is not required but if i would have not seen these rashes then yes i would have done endoscopy in this boy so when there is a persistent or worsening abdominal pain despite steroids there is evidence of renal failure there are development of systemic symptoms like pulmonary or cns symptoms then always think that this may not be iga vasculitis think of anca vasculitis or sle and work up this patient for further evaluation so now how to manage this patient the management is very simple it is just symptomatic treatment avoid any nsaids because pediatricians often give brufen to such patient for pain but try to avoid nsaid because it will worsen the problem it can cause bleeding ensure enough hydration and look for the vascular complications 
Specific treatment, I started this patient on 20 milligrams of steroid and the pain went away in 24 hours duration. The steroids was con uh, continued for only 20 days and then I stopped the steroids. Uh, we need to monitor for renal and gastrointestinal complications. So I advise parents ko ke potika color dekhte rana, blood ya aisa kuch bhi aata hai, just inform. Uh, urine analysis I usually do every 15 to 20 days to check for protein urea and hematuria. Uh, relatives ko bhi bol ke rakh sakte hain ke agar peshab lal jaisa ho to turan inform kare. And keep on checking for blood pressure at least uh, at least thrice or four, uh, four times in a week. If steroids are not working then we can use colchicine. So this is a flow chart. So if the patient has severe abdominal pain and he is not able to take orally and if there are signs of dehydration if yes then we can give pulsed steroids if no then look for whether there is joint pain or not if there is no no joint pain and the patient is ambulatory and the patient has mild to moderate abdominal pain and if there is no active GI bleeding or glomerulonephritis so then if there is GI bleed, then we need to give dolo or ultraset because steroids can increase the GI bleed sometimes. And if there are no active GI bleed, we can use naproxen or brufen. But I usually avoid giving NSAIDs because many a times I have seen patients having a very bad GI bleed. But if the pain is very severe, then oral steroids for a short duration will help. So this is how we can manage. But this is a general flow chart. You can uh, shift from case to case basis. This is just to give you a general brief idea. Medical facts about IgA vasculitis. It is the most common vasculitis in children. 90% of cases are less than 10 years. Annual incidence is around 10 to 20 cases uh, in 1 lakh children. I usually see around 2 to 3 patients a year. It affects small vessel of the body and there is IgA deposits uh, with complement deposition and activation. It usually follows a streptococcal upper respiratory tract infection. So always ask this history in detail and examine the skin in detail, especially the buttocks because that is the hidden part. Prognosis is usually excellent. The recovery is usually in the four, four to six weeks. There are rare complications like renal involvement or gastric perforation. A rash can be seen up till one month. So, kabhi kabhi parents wo rash dekh ke parishan hote So, the, par uh, the father of this child was sending me the images on WhatsApp every two days. Sir, ye bad gaya, yahan pe kam ho gaya. So, just reassure them that the rash is not very dangerous. You just need to monitor for abdominal pain and renal complications. So, instructions, check BP, urine color, any facial or pedal edema. Uh, Visolon, the recommendation is up to 4 weeks, but I usually give for around 1 to 2 weeks or 3 weeks depending on the response. Stay connected for more such interesting cases. If you have any other doubts in any other topics involving gastrointestinal system, you can just uh, write a comment. I will try to make a video on that topic. So, we will meet on the next video. Till then, bye. Namaskar. गैस्ट्रो गुरु के साथ बढ़ाएं अपने पाचन स्वास्थ्य का अनुभव जहां विज्ञान और वास्तविक ज्ञान मिलते हैं ऑथेंटिक मेडिकल हेल्थ इंफॉर्मेशन गैस्ट्रो गुरु के संग